Welcome everyone to the We Hack Purple stream with Matt from Defect Dojo. And I talk about Defect Dojo a lot, so I'm really excited that he came here and he's going to give us a demo. He's one of the people that invented and created it and has been maintaining it for almost a decade. But I'm going to let Matt tell you about Matt and I'm going to just hand everything over to you, Matt. Does that sound good? That sounds perfect. Um, let me screen share, which would be rather useful for everybody. Awesome. So hello and welcome. We're going to talk about Defect Dojo, particularly taking your DevSecOps to 11. If you get the Spinal Tap reference, hopefully you do. So quick cover of what we're going to uh, talk about today. Yeah, first, we're going to just do a quick intro to give you an idea of where Defect Dojo came from, its history. I was just telling Tanya, I think. I remember correctly, I believe in February will have been 10 years ago when I was on a whiteboard at Rackspace planning this out, but I'm, I'm tipping my hat on the first section. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the benefits of Defect Dojo and why I think it's cool. And we're going to talk about DevSecOps in Dojo, and then we're going to go to the uh, conclusion and give you some key takeaways. So where did this all get started, this Defect Dojo thing? So once upon a time, way back when, I was uh, running the product security team at Rackspace. We had 12 people at the peak. I, I don't remember how many were there when we started working on Dojo, but, um, and we owned everything in cloud. So if it was part of Rackspace's cloud, it was our problem from the infrastructure up. So we were running a bunch of different tools uh, at Rackspace that kind of the running joke was, when vendors would say, yo, what, what languages do you write in? Or what language do you write in? And I'm like, can, tell you, can I tell you the three we don't? Because we kind of had everything going. And so we had this plethora of tools that we were trying to deal with and make sense of, and unfortunately have differing outputs from, and it was just a pain. And Defect Dojo was created to solve that problem, right? How do you handle, the other thing we did a ton at, at Rackspace was manual testing as well, which is something that doesn't get talked about as much with Defect Dojo, but it's also really that nice for manual so pen good. testers. Um, but that's where it all started way back when, when we said, we got all these tools, I'm trying to produce reports. I'm muting people, Matt. Sorry, okay. um, I muted you and then immediately unmuted you, but I'm muting people who came on and might be making a bit of noise, sorry. Ah, no worries, no worries. Um, but anyway, we had this plethora of tools. We were trying to get a single report out to a team to give them some actionable items to go take care of. And when you have 12 different reports in 12 different formats, it gets really old. And I, I, I realized that developers don't like when you hand them 12 different reports. So that was kind of the genesis of Defect Dojo. The other question is, how do you handle tracking vulnerabilities, right? This was this issue we had at Rackspace, right? Is it, is it a plethora of sticky notes on the wall? Um, is it something else? Like, how do you manage all the, the findings that you find as you are assessing security? Well, oops, come here, you. So, we did a highly scientific study and looked at what enterprises are using for vulnerability management. And the current tool for 90% of vulnerability management programs, anybody have a guess? Going once, going twice. I'm going to Excel. tell my hat. Excel. Excel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's so sad. Oh, Jira would be a good answer, quite honestly. Jira's not bad, but oh my goodness, it, it is. It is Excel. And my only response to that is why? Why do we do this to ourselves? Oh my goodness. And I don't know why I put rubber rain boots on my poor dog, but it was pretty dang funny. Um, so let's talk about Defect Dojo. So Defect Dojo is a security program and vulnerability management tool. It allows you to manage all of the applications or software or whatever you have as part of your security program. It maintains an inventory of all those applications, as well as a bunch of metadata about them. You can schedule assessments, scans, you can triage vulnerabilities, you can push those findings to the just mentioned JIRA. Um, and you can consolidate them, all of these different tools into one source of truth. And it is slightly over nine years of, of use. I, I think we, we designed it in February and we had two summer interns that 
wrote loads of code for the first <laughs> first oh single pane of glass yes p-a-i-n i love that i've used that before that's awesome so why did we create dojo we had a bunch of manual testing efforts when at rackspace um tons of our pro our testing was over apis because that's what powers a cloud and particularly eight years ago nine years ago now oh geez a long time ago the tooling for apis was curl and a local proxy that was like top end tooling to check apis so we did loads of manual testing and like i mentioned earlier we needed to combine output from multiple tools we wanted to get deduping and to be able to merge findings uh, and for us at Rackspace, we had to we had to report both on infrastructure and on app issues. I've worked at other teams where it was only app or it was only infrastructure, kind of depending on your company. And uh, honestly, I got very sick of logging into 15 different vendor motherships because they didn't have reasonable APIs to let me do things. And at Rack, we were always behind the eight ball, which I think is the story of all product teams or product security teams. So we needed to automate. We needed a, a sane REST API. So Defect Dojo will manage a dev, DevSecOps or product security or AppSec or whatever you want to call your security program. Um, I think one of its best features is the fact that it was created by AppSec people for AppSec people as opposed to by some corporate committee. Um, it will give you an application inventory with metadata it does engagement tracking and engagement is you can think of it as an assessment it it supports both manual and automated security work i mentioned deduplication and false positive tracking you can do custom re, um, custom report creation and it can have a repository of your past re, uh, reports you can tag across multiple levels within the tool there's a calendar which is quite handy if you're managing a team to know who's doing what when and for how long and something that I didn't think was going to happen, but came was very useful at Rackspace, if nothing else, in future places, was um, it gives you historical knowledge of past assessments. Because inevitably, I would have a manager walk by and say, when was the last time we looked at the Bob app? And I'm like, I have no freaking clue, right? But I could pop into Dojo, look up the Bob app and say, oh, sweet. You know, it was three months ago or a year ago or whenever it was. I could get that answer really quick. It was kind of an accidental outgrowth of being having the single source of truth, which was pretty fantastic. So Defect Dojo, it's a very active project. It's an OWASP flagship project, which is a flag to become a flagship project. You have to be sort of uh, strategic to OWASP's mission. Um, we've had many summer of code participants over the years. We do monthly releases and we just started for 2023 doing monthly releases. And then, well, basically we do one monthly release and then three bug fixes and then another monthly release. So it look, the worst you're gonna have to deal with a bug if you're able to update is a week, which is pretty amazing for an open source project. We there have 320, question. I'm sorry? There's a question in the chat. Sarah oh. asks, can we customize assessment requirements? Yes, actually. So there's two ways to do that. Well, I'm getting ahead, but I'll just talk about it now. That's perfectly fine. Um, there's two ways to do that with assessments, the requirements. You can either do that in policy or you can do it as a questionnaire. There's a feature in Defect Dojo called a questionnaire where you can actually create a list of oh. questions that need to be answered by the team. And then those answers get plumbed into Defect Dojo once those answers are complete. So yes, and great question. Uh, like I said, 327 contributors over the years. It's been pretty amazing, this humble little thing. Um, it is a very active project. I pulled these numbers the uh, day or two ago. I can't remember. But 96 merge pull requests in a month. Um, we have eight open, seven closed, and 14 new issues. All this activity happened within a month. Um, we have uh, 1.2 thousand forks and 26, uh, 22, uh, 2.6 thousand stars, which I can remember early days when Greg and I were like, we got to 300 stars. We got to 300 stars. <laughs> and uh, oops, we're way past that now. And about a week ago, maybe two, we got listed uh, on the open source security index as one of the top 20 fastest growing security projects. So it's just been nuts for OWASP of late, or for Defect Dojo. 
the wasp of light. So, okay, let's get into the benefits. And I'm going to take a quick drink, unfortunately, of water. So let's first, I'm going to cover how to think about Dojo. There's a particular way we model things, and it helps to understand that before I cover some of the benefits of Defect Dojo. So let's say that we all work for Microsoft. That's a company I'm sure everybody knows. And Microsoft has decided to adopt Defect Dojo. So the first level in Defect Dojo's data model is a product type. And you can think of it, it's, it's the top level object, and you can think of it as a way to group similar applications into one group, primarily for reporting. Like if I wanna say how all of Office is doing, I could do reporting on the Office product type as opposed to Azure or some other product area for Microsoft. And so for our example, we're gonna use Office as that product type. Then a product in Dojo world is a specific application, like some spe uh, a specific application of a particular product type. It's a hierarchy. So in this case, we're going to pretend that we are part of the word team. Next, we have an engagement, which is like an assessment. It's the goal of the testing activity. So we're doing, let's say, a, a, Fred, a FedRAMP review to see if we're ready to do FedRAMP. And if you've ever done that, you'll realize this is quite onerous. Um, and then a test. A test is a tool or assessment activity, like a manual pen test or running SAST or SCA or whatever. And by the way, it doesn't have to be one tool. It could be a whole bunch of tools. One of the nice things about the engagement model that Defect Dojo uses is you can mash together multiple tools into one engagement and have one report at the engagement level, right? Instead of saying checkmark says these five bad things and SSL lab says these three bad things and sneak has 12 other bad things, you can just have one list of things, which is very handy, particularly when you're reporting to dev teams. And then finally, a finding, right? This is a security issue, something you found or discovered during your testing. Um, the, this could be something like SQL injection or an outdated library if you're doing SCA, et cetera. Um, but that's, it, that's the sort of the, the lowest level, at least in this part of the model. There's a oh, question. Like the oh, There's yeah, a question. Um, Mark asks, so if I don't have a product family like Microsoft Office, could it be something like my main app as the product type and then web front end as the product or how? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, it could be it could be anything. Honestly, it is arbitrary. Most people tend to put it into product groups. I worked with a bank one time that they had multiple portfolios. Um, where they had their retail banking, their investment banking, their insurance, their this, their that were different product types. And then they had applications within that. It really, it's really arbitrary. I've seen other companies do business units. I've seen other companies do things like their EMEA operations versus their North America operations versus APEC operations, right? So it's really a way to group things for reporting is really where it's crucial or most beneficial, I should say. Um, so SQL injection. And then the final part of the model is an endpoint. And this is where the issue was found. So if you're doing infrastructure, this could be a host name, IP, et cetera. If you're doing static, this might be a, 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 a file and a line of that file would be the location. Um, we started out just doing infrastructure. So endpoint name has stuck, even though it's technically not exactly what's there. Okay, we have more questions. Yeah, love um, it. Amman says, I really think Dojo is amazing. I've been thinking of setting Dojo up for the application security program at my organization. Would you recommend directly setting it up via the AWS AMI or getting in touch with the team at 10 Security? P.S. Matt is the team, at, one of the team at 10 <laughs> Security. Please feel free to answer at the end of the presentation if that's better. Uh, I can I can handle it right now. That's fine. So the AMI is is a good um, 
is a good install. It's certainly quick and easy. I think a lot of people end up using that just to prove out the fact that, that Defect Dojo will work for them because you can do a few clicks in Amazon and have a running dojo, which is pretty sweet. The one thing about the AMI is it's somewhat limited in that all of the infrastructure is living on that AMI. So you've got the Dojo app, a uh, front end uh, Nginx, a database, a uh, salary with some workers. And obviously you can set this up in a more performant way, um, but that takes time and effort. So it kind of depends on if you want to run it on-prem or SaaS. Um, and if you want to do either with commercial support, Penn Security can definitely help you there. Okay, so that's the data model. Here is it, it is visually for people who like visualness. So right, we have product type and a product, you can have one or more product under product type, you can have one or more engagement under each product. You can have multiple tests under an engagement and multiple findings under a test and then an endpoint. And by the way, endpoints can span tests. It's sort of a unique across the, the Dojo instance. So that's nice, like all this about Dojo, but so what, right? My dog is a skeptic. So what can Defect Dojo do for you? So I'm gonna start with the big picture. Um, Aaron Weaver and I, many years ago when we worked together at Pearson, came up with this idea of a, an AppSec pipeline. And the overarching idea is for any kind of security program, product security, AppSec, DevOps, whatever, DevSecOps, you have intake where you have requests coming in, you have to triage those requests to understand what work is hidden in that request you do some sort of assessment and testing, then you need to deliver those results to somebody. And where Defect Dojo sits here is it's that one source of truth, the vulnerability repository. And actually, even some of this uh, request services is now built into Defect Dojo via the questionnaire, questionnaires I mentioned earlier. But so the idea here is this gives you the ability to run multiple tools and push all the results to one place. And then as you're trying to uh, tell your constituency about what you've discovered, you have a single model to push into a defect tracker like JIRA or to make metrics or to tie to a GRC tool, et cetera, which makes your lives easier because you don't have to figure out how do I put JIRA tickets in for SSL labs? How do I put JIRA tickets in for sneak? How do I put, ugh, why don't you just do it once, which is very useful. So how many tools do you use, right? You've got DAST, SAST, SCA, infrastructure, cloud security tools, Docker tools. If you're running Kubernetes, you probably have some K K8S stuff. Um, you probably have container vulnerability tools. There's just loads of tools if you're doing AppSec these days or any kind of security, cybersecurity work. Well, lucky for you, Defect Dojo imports from over 150 tools, um, which is pretty freaking amazing um, and that number just keeps growing i remember when we were like happy with 70 <laughs> um, but it has exploded um, and one of the nice things is if we don't have um, a tool supported there is a generic importer to either scsv or um, json if you can take your results of your tool and munge them into either csv or json you can import them that way so there is a workaround if you happen to have a 152nd tool that isn't quite yet supported. Um, we have documentation up at documentation.defectojo.com. I think it's pretty darn good considering we're an open source project. Uh, obviously, like any documentation, I'm sure it could be better, but it's pretty darn good. We have a brochure site um, at defectojo.org if you want to introduce this to, to management and have them get a quick scroll through an overview of what Defect Dojo is. This is not a bad place to go. We have a GitHub org at github.com slash defect dojo with multiple repositories there, 27, I guess, looking at the screenshot. Um, the primary repo for the application is Django defect dojo. Defect dojo is a Python 3 Django application or moving this week. Actually, we're in the middle of doing a PR to get us to uh, Django 4.1. Um, so we're fairly up to date on all those things. If you do need support, back to the AMI question, um, defectdojo.com is a place for support. It's the sort of the new name of Penn Security. Uh, we can do support. We also have a SaaS offering, 
and we can do on-prem supported installs as well, just depending on what you need. Uh, bonus material. So one of the things we've done is kept example scan files for all of the scanners so that if you need to see, uh, this is useful in several ways. One, if you're just playing around with Dojo and you want to have something to upload, you can grab this repo and have some files that you can upload into the into the, the app. But also you can do things like, I have, uh, I don't know, Aqua. Why is my Aqua not working? You can look at the scan file example we have and see if it matches. Maybe there's a, you know, you're doing output to JSON and we need CSV or vice versa, right? So it's just generally a useful bit of knowledge. We also have community, community contributed uh, content in a bunch of different areas. Most of them like how to deploy it. Like you can see uh, CloudFormation, there's how to deploy on CentOS 7, Ansible, etc. And the deployment is very flexible. The usual way that people deploy, well, there's really two now, but the, one of the, the ways we certainly do development um, and a lot of our installs are using Docker Compose. We also have Helm, so you can do Kubernetes if you happen to be Kubernetes-y kind of place. Um, if you want to do a bare metal install, uh, there's Go Dojo, which does a just a literal install on a disk. Um, I, I wrote Go Dojo, so I'll, I'll take, I guess, full credit for it. Um, I think it's pretty cool, but to be honest with you, um, I think Compose is a better way to do the installs because the updates are significantly easier. Otherwise, um, you have to deal with uh, putting files on disk and then updating those files by doing a, a, a pull out of GitHub, etc. It's it's just not as easy as swapping out a container reference in a compose, although it's all there. If iron works for you, this is not a bad way to get a running dojo. In fact, that's what's used to do the install for the AMI. So there you go. It does work. <laughs> it's just the uh, updates are a little more interesting if you do an iron install. And that's just how it is with iron because you can't just swap out a container reference. So if you're curious, you want to give it a spin. We've got a public demo up uh, 24 seven 365. You can log in as an admin and poke around. It's up at demo.defectdojo.org. Um, it's kind of funny when people have asked me about like how secure is Defect Dojo? I'm like, well, you can log in as an admin. Anybody can log in as an admin and we put the password in our readme. So, hey, it can't be too hard, <laughs> right? It can't be too brittle, I guess. I've had to do a few things like people had some fun with changing out the login banner to silly things. So we overwrite that and then they would reset the admin password, which is cute. And so we overwrite that. But other than that, it's really not had too much exposure. And we do have a, an ongoing bug bounty program with Hacker One, if I remember correctly, it's either that or Bug Crowd. I'm pretty sure it's Hacker One. So let's talk about some Defect Dojo secret sauce. So Defect Dojo keeps track of repeated findings, aka duplicates. You can suppress this globally or per engagement. And how do we determine duplicates? We look at the endpoint for DAST or file location for SAST, title or CWE, and the same product. Uh, however, that's kind of the legacy system. The newer system will take a custom list of elements that are pre present in the scan file and compute a hash code of that and use that to find duplicates. And for, of those 150 tools, I wanna say 60-ish, I don't, I haven't counted recently, have those custom hash codes. So this is something that's configurable by you as well. And then the other thing that Defect Dojo does is keep track of uh, false positives. So if you mark something as a false positive in Defect Dojo, it will remember that and then hide future instances of it. This is one of the things Defect Dojo strives to do is we understand humans are going to have to do some work, but we'd like you to do it maybe once and then not have to have it repeated. So that's kind of the model for false positives. I can mark them once and then they get they get marked in future. Um, and, and false positives are match, matched by title or CWE, same product, same tool. And yes, false positives suck. <laughs> Fully agree with that chat comment. Oh, and then see, if you remember, if you remember you this. you see the comment yeah. from Sarah? Um, I missed it. 
if the same CVE is raised by different scanning tools in the same engagement, would that also be considered as a duplicate? It depends on a couple things. Under the legacy system, that would be marked as a duplicate. Under the new system, it depends on how it's configured, but it could certainly be done. It, it really, because we get so many different data points from different tools, it's sort of hard to answer globally. Um, and But because you can configure what goes into calculating that hash code, if you either wanted to or not wanted to take a CVE into account for duplication, you could do that configuration change. So definitely. Now, one thing I, I, I'll tell you we won't do, because I'm just like an honest person, is DAST to SAST. Like if we happen to catch a dupe there, that's pure luck. <laughs> It's mostly within a tool because it's really hard to go. And I've, I've seen, I mean, I've been doing AppSec for well, getting on 20 years now. I've seen lots of vendors claim that and I just don't believe it because it's hard. So one of the other, if you remember this diagram where I showed us the, the uh, AppSec pipeline, one of the other key features of having Defect Dojo in place is it gives you a second place to get rid of false positives, a la the false positive suck comment. Um, ideally, you can tune them in the tool itself. But depending on the tool, you may or may not have the right kind of knobs and levers to make this happen. And so ideally, yes, like keep garbage out of Defect Dojo by tuning false positives as much as possible upstream of it. But if you can't, for whatever reason, Defect Dojo gives you that second stop to look at um, issues and mark false positives there so that downstream systems, a la like putting issues into JIRA, don't contain false positives. And this is one of the, some of the early days of AppSec automation. I saw a lot of people writing code that would take tool output and dump it directly into JIRA, which is not bad. I mean, it's pretty good. But one of the things it doesn't give you is the ability to check false positives prior to pushing them to JIRA, where Defect Dojo gives you that second chance. Um, and another piece of our secret sauce is you can select multiple findings and merge them together. This is another, I think, it's kind of hidden feature, honestly, but it's really cool. Um, it allows you to do things like, oh, I like TLS is a great example. You'll do a, uh, an infrastructure scan. There'll be six issues about TLS that all boil down to update the config, right? So you could report six JIRA tickets, or you could put one after merging all those six together into one finding and then pushing that finding to JIRA. So the merge part of Defect Dojo has been hugely valuable to me to not make uh, my dev teams downstream hate me because I give them 12 JIRA tickets when it's really one fix. I mean, I guess you can play the numbers and look really good because I closed 12 tickets with one fix. Um, but yeah, that's not so cool to do to the dev teams. And then finally, Defect Dojo has a REST API. I gave myself, I think if I have time, I'll do a quick demo. Um, and if I do anything I show you in the demo, you can do through the API. So one of the nice things about Defect Dojo is, yes, it has a UI, but you don't have to use it. You can just talk to the REST API, which is pretty sweet, particularly for automation, which brings us to the DevSecOps portion of our program. Ooh, and another drink for me. So going back and remembering this guy, right? This DevOps, Dev, DevSecOps AppSec pipeline, where we have intake, where we have uh, some kind of work coming inbound. We triage that work, decide what we want to do with it. We test it and we deliver. And by the way, this model allows you to do things like, one of the things we did very successfully at Pearson was, during this triage phase, we decided how many of these tools got run. So for low risk apps, maybe we only just ran an automated DAST scan and quite honestly pass those results without human validation to the teams because we just didn't have the bandwidth. But for medium risk apps, they got a larger group of tools and manual uh, review. And then maybe the top tier gets um, the entire suite of tools and manual testing and manual review before you push them to Defect Dojo. So one of the nice things of this model is it can adapt to how much rigor you want to do with testing. 
So the first generation of a, a AppSec pipeline that, that I was ever part of was one that I did at, at Pearson. I was just talking about it. And in this case, um, well, a little background. Pearson at the time was centralizing the CISO group across eight different major bits of a company. Um, and it was a little bit of chaos. It was a little bit chaotic, to be honest with you. And so after being there for a month or two, I can't remember quite how long, I sat down with the team and we kind of said, okay, look, um, here is here is what, and I should have, dang it, I should have done this. I've got a great paper drawing of my first AppSec pipeline. <laughs> it didn't start with a nice picture. So you know, just full disclosure there. Um, but we took, we looked at what we had to do when we came up with that idea conceptually of the AppSec pipeline I just showed you. And so Adam, uh, one of the guys that I worked with, Adam took this, uh, took the idea of writing bag of holding. And then um, I worked with Defect Dojo and the tool integrations. And um, we ended up setting up this pipeline so that requests would come into bag of holding. This has primarily been replaced with the questionnaires and features that are in Defect Dojo, to be honest with you. One of the one of the learnings we got from the very first pipeline is when you have apps listed here and apps listed here, you now have to manage them. If this is if bag of holding thinks the Bob app is number ID seven, it has an ID for defect dojo and we had to do a lot of synchronizations between these two systems, which is one of the reasons why we sort of absorbed all of the functionality of bag of holding and stuck it into defect dojo. But then, like I was mentioning earlier at, at Pearson, we could run one or more of these tools um, based on the risk level of that application, push them into Defect Dojo, push them out to JIRA. We did a ton of custom reporting for the CISO group and the business units, um, just reading out of the API and generating stuff. And we also had RSA Archer that we would send results to. And just as an aside, we found out that a team had Qualys Waz, some random part of Pearson. Uh, it wasn't a tool that we ran or managed, but we talked to that team and were able to write some code to take those Qualys results and automatically shove them into Defect Dojo. So every time they ran Qualys, we got a free little bit of visibility into what was going on uh, automatically into Defect Dojo, which was pretty dang cool. And what, what happened with this? How did this uh, how did this work for us? So when I got there, we were doing 44 assessments a year. By year two, we were doing 224 assessments a year, um, which is a 409 percent increase. And we lost three and a half person, and no, nobody got cut in half. <laughs> we had somebody who was half time assigned to our group who got unassigned to our group. And then by year two, we were up to 414. Um, which overall over two years, that's an 840% increase, which was amazing for us. We actually started getting pushback from other teams complaining that we were making them look bad, which was an unfortunate for them outcome, but I didn't feel too bad about it. Uh, we did lose headcount, but still move faster, which is almost contrary to logic. And we were a much happier team because one of the interesting things when you set up an AppSec pipeline like this and you make the steps well known is you get a very smooth system and everybody kind of understands where things are and you remove tons of paper cuts that end up sort of, uh, well, if nothing else, deflating your sales as you're trying to make progress. So a second, an example of a second generation AppSec pipeline. Um, I did this actually at Duo Security where an event source, and in this case, it would be a, a check-in to Git would happen. The AppSec pipeline would get a webhook to be notified of that. It would launch a whole bunch of containers um, doing running one or more tools against whatever the target was. In this case, it was mostly a repo at Duo. Those containers would run and we would take those tool results, shove them into Defect Dojo, and boom, we had everything set up and, and working. Um, one interesting aspect of this is when I first set it up, I had no clue how quick or slow it was going to be, honestly. Um, turns out it was very quick. I was doing 36 Python repos in three minutes. So we actually went from this idea of having a merge into master was going to be the event to any code check-in being the event. 
And as a bonus feature, because we had all of these tools were containers, I could give the developers the very same containers with the very same configs that they could run locally if they wanted to sort of pre-check before they committed to the repo, which was very, uh, the, the developers like that, right? They basically could tell them like, look, you're gonna run this gauntlet in this way. And by the way, if you wanna run it on your laptop before it gets real, here's how you do that. So that was pretty cool. Uh, another example of an OWASP powered pipeline, so to speak, right? You get a pull request for a project, Jenkins notices that, it can launch a bunch of Dockers, aka Zap, et cetera, dependency check, um, push those findings to Defect Dojo. Optionally, you can push uh, notifications to a Slack channel and also ship vulnerabilities off to Jira. Just another example of a way to sort of slice and dice this problem. Um, here's an example of another second gen AppSec pipeline. This was also event based where a developer would check in code. This was a very Atlassian shop, no surprise. Um, man, I got the ancient logo on there, shame on me. Um, but you would check into stash, into Git basically. That would send a webhook to an AppSec pipeline that would once again launch Dockers based on the, the tool profile or the, excuse me, the application profile. And then it would ship those results to Defect Dojo. It would put a summary of that last run into the Slack channel for that dev team and also push any issues over to Jira. And for that one, um, the results that came out of that was 15 repos over four months, had 5,100 runs and over 25,000 container executions. And these numbers give you a really good idea of if you change running tools into an easy button, usually by containerizing them, these things become really easy to fire off um, at speed and at scale, which is pretty amazing. Ooh, okay, here we go. I got 20 oh, question. minutes. Sorry, yeah. question. Sarah asks, Defect Dojo can track which commit or branch triggered the scans. Is that possible? So there is metadata um, in Defect Dojo to track. Uh, you can put a commit or a branch in there, yes. That's trackable. It's not by default, it's an optional field, right? But you can add that certainly, either as part of a CI CD run via the API or you can type it in a UI if you want. Yep. Okay, here goes nothing. This is the demo instance of Defect Dojo. Um, seems like we're okay. Um, so just to give you an overview, this is the main dashboard. This is what you see when you first log in. Um, and since we're here, this is the API docs for V1 and V, or, well, open API V1 and open API V3 of the docs, the API calls are the same. You can grab an API key here, um, and you can also, this is, there is a, an API key per user. It's a, a bearer token key. Um, so let's go down this side, and I'm going to actually expand this so you guys, because I know what the symbols mean, but you probably don't. So we can look at all products. Oh, and I can time out because I let this stand too long. Let me copy my password in, which I kept handy because I knew this was going to happen to me. Here we go. We can go to all products, right? And for every product, you can have arbitrary tags on them. You can have a criticality level as well as a bunch of different metadata. Like this is a web app that's in sustain. And sorry, this is Pearson logo. This means it's an ongoing, we're running it, we're not retiring it or building it. Um, it's internally developed with an external audience and it's internet accessible. So these give you all kind of quick ideas about the sort of state of that app. This will tell you what engagements have happened in that application. Um, if it's connected to JIRA, this will tell you what the JIRA connection is, how many active findings there are, if there's any vulnerable hosts, this is for infrastructure type findings. Um, and then you look, these are the product types. So we've got a billing, a commerce, research, et cetera. You can also um, look, at, look at this from a product type perspective, right? This is our billing, commerce, and research. This is why I was talking about how um, at reporting levels, you can do reporting at a product type or at a product or at an engagement or at a test or even findings, just generically findings across all of Dojo if you want to. 
So there's a bunch of different reporting levels built into Defect Dojo, but let's drill into one of these. Oh, and by the way, this little F, you can establish grading levels for applications, and then these grades will auto appear based on how you establish the criteria. Um, SLAs, since we're on here, this is, by the way, is metadata just generally about the application, including its JIRA. Um, for SLAs, you can establish an SLA per, well, there's a default SLA that Defect Dojo ships with. You can create multiple additional SLAs and attach them to any product. So if you have varying SLAs across your products, you can accommodate that with Defect Dojo. If you go over to the uh, configuration, there's this SLA configuration, and it allows you to do arbitrarily an arbitrary number of different SLAs, whatever makes sense. I have a question, uh, Matt. Yeah, so sometimes me. I'll go work somewhere and there's no SLA and there's tons of apps in prod and most of them are a disaster. And so quite often I'll come up with an SLA for like vulnerabilities that we already knew about versus new vulnerabilities. Is it possible to do that? Like sort of a grandfathering system? Oh, interesting. Um, the, so the SLA works based on when the issue was reported so you would that would be interesting slas attach at a product level so i don't think you could do that at an engagement level which would how it would be how you could tell like old versus new you might have to do like one for grandfathered and one for new and then slowly move those over time if that makes yeah. sense yeah that would work yeah. though that would work it would definitely work you could you could you know be lax with the people that have a lot of legacy baggage <laughs> right and be a little if more has, strict with the new people yeah like if there's 300 criticals in like a really old app it's like okay well you know you have time to fix it but it's not okay if you make any new criticals or highs or meetings right yeah the uh the other interesting thing that i had one time was a a, a SAST assessment of a particular app that came back with 666 uh findings all high um, and so I call that the findings of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop interrupting now. Please continue your demo. Sorry. No, no, that's great. Um, one of the other things, this is this is the findings that exist for this app uh, for all for all time within the scope of this particular budget project. Uh, technologies, you can list technologies and then do searches based on them to find out everybody that's using Tomcat or some such thing. We also have regulations you can attach. Uh, there's RBAC um, in Defect Dojo, so you can see who are the members who can uh, see this product and who are the groups that can see this product. Um, and then if you're mo moving uh, sort of right to left across these tabs, components, uh, this one is a bad example. We have the none component. Uh, if, if you have SLA uh, results in for a product, those SLA library or SCA, excuse me, libraries will show up here. Um, this one doesn't have it. You can look at metrics at a, at a product level. Um, you can also do engagements that we talked about. And so Defect Dojo has this idea of active engagements, aka they're, AKA they're being worked. These are paused, they got started and stopped for some reason, and then closed means they're done. Um, and there's a bunch of different statuses you can attach to engagements. There's also two different types of engagements the CICD engagement and a interactive engagement. Uh, the way to think about those is CICD engagements are we really created because as you start to run automation, I don't necessarily care that three runs ago on my weekly PLS scan that they failed. I really care about what happened on the last run. So CICD engagements only keep the last uh, last set of results in the engagement so you like you can just continually re upload into a uh, CICD engagement and it's only going to tell you the last thing that happened. Um, interactive engagements are point in time, these are most useful for people that are doing compliance kind of things where I need to prove to the auditor that I did my quarterly PCI scan or whatever like compliance driven things where you want to know that at this point in time, this thing happened. Um, these findings, this is findings across all of the, um, how long would you set the one to last? So CICD can last forever. The, 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 oh, sorry, I had a question. 
for a CI, CI, bleh, for a CI CD engagement, how long did you set that one to last? Um, you can leave those running forever, like don't have an end date and continually push results. What, what, what drove the idea of the CI CD engagement was we didn't have it at one point in time. And as we started doing daily scans, we were like, wait a minute, this product is going to have 365 CI CD or CI CD engagements over a year. And you do the multiple across a lot of products and that's just zillions of engagements. So that seems stupid. <laughs> so we created a new engagement type. That's, that's what's behind that. But great question. Um, this tab is findings across all time for the product. There's an interesting thing inside of Defect Dojo, this idea of active versus verified. Um, active findings are findings, I like to think of them as findings that tools have found that we believe are real. Active and verified are tools, results from a tool or manual effort that not only did the tool say it's bad, but a human went back and verified it. So in a lot of places where I've run Defect Dojo, I've made the bar to get into JIRA being active and verified because a tool said it's bad and a human confirmed that it truly is bad. Now it's worth reporting. So if you look at active verified, you can come through here and these are the findings. You can drill into these uh, findings and look at the details. Um, one thing that Defect Dojo has is this idea of similar findings. Um, this, these are findings that we think might be related, but they're certainly not dupes. So this is more of a hint that you might want to combine these or just take a look at them. They're somehow related. I don't know if this one has any. It has a few that are related. So it gives you an idea of uh, maybe these are ones that are dupes, not dupes, but like ones you can merge. They're similar findings where the fix is the same action on the part of the dev team and you can merge them. Um, and by the way, if I go back here, since I mentioned it, you can say, take these two, here's two reflected XSS. I click here and I can merge those findings into one and just make a single finding and then report one reflected XSS. Now this one doesn't make sense. It's in two different files. So maybe the fix isn't the same thing, but you get the idea. There's a comment in the chat. Uh, well, so the first comment is, oh my, yes, so many tools out there don't provide any way of doing that. Um, you know, like de duplicating, marking things as verified. And they just force you to spam the devs with a ton of false positives or do all your work in your ticketing system to triage. Yep. And that, that's why I love Defect Dojo. <laughs> that was completely what motivated us to write it. I can't remember, I worked at a place and I don't remember what tool it was. It was an SCA like tool, but it had really terrible results that came out of it. Mm. Um, and at the time I was pressed for time. I, I, I have since gone in and updated the importer, but the importer put stuff in weird places that I didn't like. So I just wrote a loop against the API that would go in, read out finding one, rewrite it the way I want it to, save it as that finding and walk through the findings and rewrite them. So I could run this script I had and in, I don't know, three, five minutes, I had all the findings like looking nice again, right? Because that's the other fun thing. Some of the ways that tools break up findings is schizophrenic at best. Um, the other thing, let's see, endpoints. So you can look at all the endpoints or vulnerable endpoints. So these are all of the vulnerable endpoints. And if there's no issues with them, they'll show as mitigated. So, I mean, 127.001, obviously this is demo data, but it has no outstanding vulnerabilities. Oh, uh, we've got ASVS 3.1 built in, and then you can go in and edit, um, edit the engagement or the product, excuse me, at this level. One interesting thing you can do is add custom fields, which is pretty cool. If you have, Let's say a um, name, uh, what is this? Uh, right, you have an internal asset management thing and you wanna be able to tie this product to that other system. This is a great place to drop that sort of key value pair. Then if you look here, I now have, oh, by the way, if we have language data, we'll also display that. 
now I have this that links this product in Defect Dojo, which happens to be product number one, to asset ID management, whatever ID, one, two, three, four. So you can make those kind of linkings to external systems, which is pretty sweet. If you have those in place, I've used the heck out of that. And those, those um, custom fields are just key, arbitrary key value pairs that are attached to a product. Um, what else did I want to show you? That's pretty much it for products. You can look at it just the engagement view of the world as well, like all of the active engagements or all of the engagements overall. Um, this is all findings across all of Defect Dojo. Um, we also support risk acceptance. I don't know if we, we don't have any setup on the demo, but you can go into a finding. Uh, let's go into this one. Um, you can go into a finding, if I remember where it is, and add a risk acceptance to it. So I can accept, avoid, mitigate, whatever. You can provide details. You can come up with a decision based on that. You can have details of the decision. You can say who accepted it. You can have proof, which is usually something like a screenshot of an email from whoever approved SLA exception, you can do that as well. That, it's pretty full featured risk acceptance built in, which is nice. Um, but let's see, components. This is all components globally across Defect Dojo. So anytime you've run an SLA, you can look at this and find out what issues are there across all of the products in Dojo. Same thing for endpoints, right? All of the, all of the endpoints at Defect Dojo is seen. Um, there's a custom report generator where I can do things like drag these widgets down here and make a cover page and a table of contents and have some findings, right, and, and fill this out. And you can basically filter those findings by a, a, a UI, unfortunate, ridiculous number of filters. So if I only want to find budget, at, budget findings for, oh, shoot, where is the tool? Anyway, you can you can do... Do, do, do. Ah, shoot, there's too many. I should, have, I should have practiced before I came on this demo, but you can pull tools, any of these things. And if you apply the filters, it'll update the findings based on whatever these filters are. And once you get this number correctly, that's what'll, or this looking correctly, that'll be what's in your report. Um, we have a whole bunch of metrics pages. Like if you mark a product critical, you can, they'll show up here as to how many highs and lows, if they're good or bad. Um, there's product type metrics. You can go and look at products and also by counts. Um, users. Um, you can have users and there's also groups. So there's R back here. Uh, so you can do things like only let a user see a particular product type or a particular product and not see the rest of Dojo. Um, calendar, like I was mentioning earlier, this is a visual way to look at what's going on. You can go forward and backward by a month. You can look at tests or engagements. You can also look at particular users, depending on how busy this calendar gets. And you can do it by month, week, or day. Um, questionnaires, I don't think we have any in the demo. Uh, but you can create an arbitrary list of questions, right? Just by adding questions, um, either multiple choice, fill in the blank, or I can't remember the other one. Oh, this is a questionnaire. Then you have to create questions. I'm doing this backwards. Um, but you can create these arbitrary uh, collections of questions and then send them out either to authenticated people. You have to have an account on Defect Dojo or to unauthenticated. If you don't want to give them a login, you can just send them a link and they can use that link to fill out the form. Once they're filled out, they'll show up on the dashboard or in here. And then you can assign them to a, a product as an engagement. There, there is a question in the chat from Naveen. Is yeah. there a way to set workflows to raise tickets or to send out alerts, et cetera, based on certain conditions like criticality, product, source of findings, and all that? So there's some of that. Um, you, you can, you, <laughs> I'm going to say you can do something, but I wouldn't recommend it. You can, you can set up Defect Dojo to automatically push to JIRA whenever you import findings. Um, I don't like that. I like to have a human verify them first, but that's definitely an option if you want to do that workflow or if it's a test that you're very sure works, that's okay. It can work that way. Generally speaking, for pushing stuff to JIRA, 
you want to select a group of them and push them at once, you can go by and, and just check the checkboxes on one or all findings and push them once they're uh, active and verified. Um, for the other one for alerting, so there is these alerts that happen inside of Defect Dojo, test added, test scan added, whatever. And you can actually, if you look in here, there are notifications based on events that you can either set to an alert if you have SMTP set up, you can send emails. If you have Slack set up, you can have it go to Slack, et cetera. So there's a pretty good way to get uh, events and alerts out of this based on things that happen. Awesome answer. Yeah. I, have, I have a fun defect dojo story to tell of how you guys helped me with a client. Sure. I, I worked somewhere and we threw everything into defect dojo and, and we looked and we looked and we realized 75% of all their vulnerabilities were in six PHP apps. They had like 200 ish apps across the whole org and they wow. didn't see we were like looking they're like oh it seems to be even amongst the teams and this and that and then we went by you have a report where it shows different technologies and then it was immediately clear that all their problems were in PHP and anyway it's oh really my. useful to see different trends and anomalies and stuff. And yeah, anyway, it's great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I, I'm running out of time, but there's also a report that you can look at findings by tool, which I found to be interesting to see if you're actually getting your money worth out of whatever you're paying a vendor to find things, which is very nice to know like, hey, that's interesting. We have both, we have these two SaaS tools and one of them is finding a lot of stuff and one of them isn't finding anything. Um, okay, so conclusion, and then I'll, I'll happily, well, I'll, I've been answering questions, but I'll happily answer more questions if you have them. So key takeaways and next steps. So key takeaways, I think AppSec programs need a single source of truth. I honestly, like, it's almost like getting a bigger monitor on your computer. Once you have that bigger monitor, you can never go backwards. And I, I would hate to be in a program that didn't have a single source of truth and like this should be no shock to anybody but every place I've gone I brought defect dojo with me because it just makes life so much better. Um, the other interesting thing about defect dojo which was an interesting side effect that wasn't really part of the initial design was. If you have an AppSec pipeline like I showed you earlier, I can switch out tool vendors and it really doesn't change my process as long as I can import them into dojo it just follows the normal flow. That means if I have an underperforming vendor, I can kick them to the curb without really impacting my program very much. Besides financial and all that other stuff you have to deal with. But at least from a process perspective, it's just another item in that list of tests in the middle of the AppSec pipeline. And if I have an underperforming vendor, well, bye, replace them with somebody else. And I don't have to radically rejigger what I do, which is pretty nice. Um, I really think you need one more than one place to get rid of false positives. Like I said, it's awesome if you can get them out at the tool level, but a lot of tools don't give you the ability to filter things like you would like them to. And so Defect Dojo is that next cool stop to filter out false positives and non-actionable findings. Um, and the findings will probably need to be deduped, combined, or otherwise massaged. And if you're trying to do tool to Jira, you don't get that ability, which is one of the another key feature of Defect Dojo, the ability to provide good actionable data to your downstream users, usually dev teams. And then APIs, the API for Dojo is a godsend. I've used the heck out of it. Um, and it is fantastic because it can remove a lot of that drudgery, right? I, like at, at Pearson, we wrote a process where Aaron wrote a tool a slat bot actually, where you could give it the URL of Git and a couple of their pieces of data, and it would automatically set up that product in Defect Dojo and in check marks at the time is what we were using. And then I wrote uh, the second half of that that it also set up automatic scans. And I wrote the second half of that that once the scans got written to disk by check marks, we grabbed them and uploaded them into Defect Dojo. So quite literally one Slack message, and we had weekly reoccurring scans on a repo where the results ended up in Defect Dojo. Like that's how you get a fun AppSec life. And that's it. I did see a question come in. Yes. Can you manage the visibility of Defect Dojo dashboards between different teams? Ooh, that's a great question. Did I hear that Greg was here? He is here <laughs> or he was, let's see if he's still here. Yep. Hey, Greg, I, 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 
Well, full disclosure, I'm pr I know you can do that in the pro version. So there is a Defect Dojo Pro, which is the SaaS offering where we add a couple things on top of Defect Dojo. Um, in the open source version, this dashboard is fixed. Um, it's, it's just fixed in code. You can do some stuff in the metrics. Which one is it? I want to say this one. Oh, of course I timed out. You can do filtering here in what shows up on this dashboard, but it's, it's fairly manual. Now, one thing, if you do pick these things, they end up being Git parameters. This is a little defect dojo inside hack. They end up being Git parameters. So you can copy that URL and it can de facto be your report. So you don't have to fiddle with these filters multiple times, but it's not, it's not nice and easy to be honest with you. Cool. Are there any other questions? I feel like ever, everyone's like, it's 10.04, we immediately have to leave. That's right. <laughs> oh, you are great, Matt. Thank you so much. I think a lot of people are going to be heading over to defectojo.com and hanging out and doing all the stuff. Oh, Mark has a question. Oh, that's a great question. So the question was, do you recommend that devs should have access to Defect Dojo or just the reports? That is a really interesting question. Um, uh, I got another question that I'll answer in a second. So a little backstory. When we first did Defect Dojo, it was completely a, a product security only tool. And there's, I didn't show this off in the demo, but there are comments in a bunch of different levels where I can leave comments at an engagement or at a test. Um, or at a, a um, product. And to be honest with you, we were extremely honest, i.e. blunt about like, hey, this team is a real pain in the backside in those comments. Um, and then we got a request for a, a dev team to have access. And we were a bit freaked out. And so <laughs> there's now private and internal and external comments. Uh, but it really, it, it's, it's kind of a political question to be honest with you. There are some dev teams that want to have access to Defect Dojo, and you could certainly give them read-only access if you just want them to look around and see what the state of their app is. I've had some teams not want developers to have access, fearing they would change stuff, right? Like they, they would turn a high into a low. And it, yes, you would see that in the, the sort of the alert bus, for lack of a better term, in Defect Dojo, but it's kind of hard to catch. Um, so it, it kind of depends on you um, and, and what makes sense. If you have a good relationship with your dev teams, I would say certainly a read only access would be useful. And you could also, I would probably recommend confining that to just that devs app, or else you might have the, you know, water cooler conversation of T he other app team, you have more criticals than we do, you guys stink, right? I might want to avoid that. Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, can you R back? Another question came in. Can you R back through Okta, SSO, or other systems? So Defect Dojo does support SSO, Okta, Azure AD, Google, a bunch of them. Um, one thing that does happen with SSO with Defect Dojo is there's not a perfect mapping of the SSO grouping to Defect Dojo. So what generally people do is the first time they come in, you can set them to have a default permission like read only or only uh, have read only to the dashboard, but don't have any products. And then you can sort of upgrade them to what they need based on their identity, but you can do SSO and just log in with that and it just works. Cool. I think that's all the questions Did I miss any Tanya, or am I good? I think you got all of them. There are a lot of really positive comments basically like this is awesome <laughs> you guys have thought about this a long time this is amazing i want to try this um and someone commented that maybe security champions should have access to their projects great point yes that would be a good thing if you have a security program champ or a security champion program um that's a, that would be a fine thing to put into defect dojo absolutely and, and I, i've seen like it's really varied at places i've worked i've let devs come in and actually triage stuff you know, they could mark them with uh, a tag that basically told me, I think this is BS. And I could go in and search for all the tags that, that you know, the developer says it's BS. And sure enough, like go through and go, yeah, he's right. He's right. Oh, they're wrong. 
oh, they're right, right? And we could have this kind of back and forth conversations just leveraging the tagging feature of Defect Dojo. We also have a super important question. What's the name of your dog? It's Jerry. <laughs> Jerry is my dog. He's a lot older than in that picture, but he's still cute, rather rather chunkier now. And I'm sure he's sleeping on a couch somewhere at my house because that's what he does. I love it. That's awesome, Matt. Thank you so much for coming on. This was so fun. Um, yeah. I really enjoyed this. For everyone that's still here, it's being recorded. And so we're gonna release that very soon. And this was a WeHack Purple stream, as you might've guessed, with Matt from Defect Dojo Inc. and all sorts of other fame as well, a WASP board member, um, but lots of other amazing things that he's done. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you everyone for coming. Any last questions before he disappears? And, and did you notice I accidentally picked a purple theme? I got your back. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. We're going to send out the recording probably tomorrow, and if not tomorrow, then definitely Friday. And thank you again, Matt. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Absolutely. This was fun. Great questions. I love it.